Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today's After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create realistic film burns, like you see in this thing. We're gonna get a little bit deeper, and we're gonna actually make these using a technique called free lensing, where you take the camera lens off of your DSLR, and then you take pictures with, you know, just the mirror in there. If you don't have a DSLR, I'm sorry, but uh, if this is a thing that you're into, and this is a tutorial you've wanted to see, then you are welcome. So, I can't really get out of lo-fi July without talking about some kind of technique that makes use of classic photography techniques, so this is one of those. So, hopefully you enjoy this little talk about film burns and how to create them using abstract photography techniques, and uh, let's uh, get the lens off this thing and get to work. Looking at your camera, there are a few things you have to know about it. So first off is how to turn it on, so let's do that. In order to do free lensing, basically we're going to want to switch this thing over into manual mode. So we get it powered on here, and we're using a Canon, and we just switch the dial here from video all the way around to manual. Alright, that's pretty good. And then we can preview what we're looking at, and I've just got a tiny prime lens on here and we'll have a look at the settings. So once we yank the lens off, the only thing you're able to control is gonna be the ISO and the shutter speed. So just to press the button and yank this thing off. I'm just twisting it and then holding it in place because I don't really want to expose the mirror in there to too much dust. And now I'm just lifting it off of the housing and moving it around so it produces these strange abstract looks. And really now you just fire away and adjust the settings as you need to darken or lighten this thing. But this is the basics of free lensing. And then you kind of just move it around and find things you're interested in and then snap some pictures. And you can also have the live preview on, which is pretty cool. But uh, one thing to say about this technique is it can be damaging if you're allowing too much light onto your sensor. You can burn it, you can harm it. But all in, you just want to look for some variety, you want to experiment with different angles, distances, tilts, moving it around, try putting your fingers in front of it, try putting other things in front of it, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff to experiment. And this is really one of those things where you can just get creative. So I won't spend too much time, but uh, we produce a bunch of these and they're pretty good. And you can see that the closer the lens is, to the body the closer to normal it is so you might want to think about making those further apart and all that stuff but the idea is you just want to create sort of abstract blobs of color and light to work with and then once you're done we'll just bring those into after effects and use them so i think we've taken enough let's uh let's actually use these for something okay so once you've taken all of your photos and what i'm going to say now about taking photos is you don't have to use free lensing to get this technique you could use long exposure on lights or all sorts of things but the idea is i just wanted to give you something fun to do with your camera that you probably haven't done before unless you do usually take the lens off because you really want to break things anyway you've got some abstract pictures let's bring them all into after effects so first i'm going to import some footage and i guess i'll just bring in the uh, intro file first, which will be the footage that we stick things over. So drag that out onto a new comp to make that. And now we're going to grab a bunch of film burns and bring those in. So I'm just dragging in an entire folder and uh, it's gonna tell me, you know, I'm missing some frames, but what it's trying to do is bring in an image sequence of all of my raw files, which are CR2s. After Effects can bring in a lot of raw files, and I recommend you bring them in this way because it is awesome and saves you processing. So I'm just bringing in a whole wackadoo of them, and there's probably going to be a bunch that are incorrect, but it's going to pull up this type of screen, and on this screen you can do things like mess around with the temperature and the tint and all sorts of things, so if you want to just make it even more interesting, go nuts, but I'm gonna have to click OK here for every single one of those images. Well, I would have, but uh, because I imported them as an image sequence, it just groups all that together. So they all got the exact same treatment out of the import. So you can either bring them in one at a time, or you can batch them in this way. I'd recommend batching them in just because I don't actually care about changing a lot of the settings on them. It's not really that interesting. So, all right, I've got this image sequence. I'm gonna bring that into a new composition as well. And this is actually a pretty massive composition. Uh, if we have a look here, look at the composition settings. It's, uh, you know, 5,000 and some by 3,000 and some, just 
crazy big. And uh, I'm just going to trim out uh, some of these not very interesting ones at the beginning when I was just trying to refine the technique a little bit. So if you have things that are just not so good, then uh, just exclude them. But that'll do. So I'll just set the beginning of the comp here. And then let's see, as I get to the end, are there any near the end that are not interesting? Eh, not really. So I'm just going to trim the comp to only be fairly interesting things. And uh, one of the things I'd recommend if you want to make things extra interesting is allow it to be grainy and nuts like this. It's pretty cool. And make the shutter speed pretty slow so you get this kind of effect going on too. So those are just some pro tips. But anyway, so we have this comp of burns that uh, basically is just going to be one frame after another of these burns that are kind of random and weird. And we want to put them on top of the footage. Now when you do that, you just get a bunch of pictures of burns over top of footage. It's not really what you're after. So you have to use the blending modes here to uh, make these more interesting. So I like to stick with the add, light, and screen color dodge series of things. You can use the overlays and the lights, but uh, really add, light, and screen are probably what you're after for these kinds of things. So let me just uh, zoom in here and I'll just do a quick render for you so you can see what we're creating. And uh, usually this is good enough for you because you're using the random stuff created by the camera and then you're just overlaying that over footage. So unless you're looking for something really specific, this is about as good as you need to get and we just need to use some randomness to exploit more out of these images that we've put on here. So if we have a look at what we've got, they're kind of cycling and, you know, just blowing out all of the colors here. So one of the things you'll need to do is adjust their opacity perhaps to make them less noticeable or perhaps you'll want to use something like uh, like a curves on them you can use the curves to change their colors and change all sorts of things you can make them more green less green all that kind of thing uh, you might want to you know do something weird to the reds who knows who knows what you want to do i don't but you can use the curves to adjust its color and its contrast use the opacity to make it more or less opaque and when it comes to having these on over your footage, we want to use the layer time freeze frame. And we're going to use this freeze frame to sort of randomize the time index that we're looking at for these burns. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply an expression to the time remap that's going to be wiggle. And we're going to go 24 times a second, comma, I don't know, like 0.5, for example. So that's half a second. So half a second either way, outside of whatever this freeze frame is, is going to cause it to render a different value that's still within the values of this comp, and uh, hopefully this produces a unique burn every so often. In order to make it look more unique, we want to pull up the rotation, and then put uh, an expression on here that's going to be wiggle, and then 24 times a second, uh, 360 or you can use a random number generator if you want but this is really going to get it done just exactly the same and you will want to stretch and skew this thing so that it is as detailed as you can withstand while not getting within the bounds of the comp because really there's a lot of good grain and detail that are in those photos you just took so you don't necessarily want to lose that so you've got it set to screen it seems to be doing crazy stuff but uh, you don't really want it to be on all the time and you don't want it to be on intensely all the time so really you can just use the uh, opacity to bring it up and down if you so desire so let's say for example we want it to be on and we want it to come in and be crazy off the start and then mellow out to not change anymore for the rest. Let's just try that example. So we know we want the opacity to be up at 100% off the get-go and then after a little while we would like it to be down to more like 50% kind of thing and we know we want it to stop wiggling is the other thing. So we're going to take a slider control, bring that out onto this thing and then when we look at the wiggle, which we can call it by hitting U, that we've used on the time ramp, we're just going to take this value here, this 0.5, and we're going to map it to the slider. So the slider is now saying wiggle 24 times a second 0, which means it's going to be constantly stuck at 29 unless we do something. 
And the slider, basically, we are going to move keyframe at 0.5 off the get-go, and then, you know, whenever things come in and come to rest, we're going to have it down at zero so that it's not being altered at all. And we still have this rotation that's being a bit of a bother, so we're going to take this value here, and we're going to link it to the slider as well. And because it's not 0.5 that we want to be wiggling on the rotation, what we're going to do is we're going to just go in here to the slider and then multiply that. We know it's 0.5, so 0.5 times 360 times 2, you know, because I can't be bothered to do too much math, but uh, you get the idea that we have just solved that little conundrum. So this is going to be rotating like crazy all the way in. And then you can just call up the keyframes here and you can stretch these and move them out as much as you'd like. So let me just uh, do a quick render of this for you so you can observe what we have done while I drink some tea. Hey everybody. So there you go. You've created these subtle little burns. Now you can make them more intense, less intense, more crazy, less crazy, all sorts of things just by adjusting the values that you're putting in here. So just remember that you, none of these things are set in stone and you don't have to do any of them is the other important thing. So if you want this thing to be starting at a slider of one, then go nuts. If you want to have more frames or fewer frames in your composition here, then uh, that's totally up to you. Go take more photos. If you don't like the photos you've got, then download some from online or wherever and to hopefully it works out. But this is a great way to combine a simple thing that you can go out and shoot, which is actually going to look nicer than pretty much anything you can synthesize yourself. So you can fake these things in After Effects, but since it's Lo-Fi July and I'm talking about things you can do with your hands, why not go up there and take some real photos? And like I said, if you don't have a DSLR camera, maybe you have a camera that you can at least alter the shutter speed on or something like that, but get creative, take some abstract photos of lights and of lighting and uh, enjoy using these film burns. So I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial with some weird, wacky film burns, and hopefully it has inspired you to go and take some abstract photos. So if you're into After Effects and motion graphics and making weird stuff, then uh, definitely subscribe to this channel. And uh, this is Lo-Fi July, so we're talking about things that are all lo-fi this month. If those aren't things you're into, then uh, check out my earlier tutorials or uh, just subscribe and wait around because there's going to be better stuff coming up soon. I I totally promise. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on the Twitter. If you have questions, ask me in the comments, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks again, and have a nice day.